Oh man, they got you doing that too, huh? Yeah, man, I gotta move out. I got a lot of shit over here. Yeah, what? me too. This is the uh, last of it. They're finally letting me sit with the uh, One Up Show guys. But I'm excited. You know, you were our intern first. Uh, you sat over here a long time ago. It's good uh, times. I got a lot of shit that needs to get moved. Why don't yeah, you? Uh, you're my intern for the rest of the day, Jay Fresh. Here, your intern. But I mean, you you know, I gotta like in, edit the show, and, and like, I mean, Castlevania whip. That's fine. Right that's uh, that's uh, a really. I've got some really cool promo stuff. That so. whip looks very real. You, uh, oh, you, you're right. in my office, all right? All right. All right. All right. Damn it. I got another box for you. It's up fresh. Uh, hey. You can put it down there by the Pokemon Panini Maker. Okay. The Cocteau Chojin uh, first aid kit. That'd be sure. great. Sure. All right. Uh, great. I still need some more stuff though. Uh, if you could go get my PS3 and all my cables and my systems, I gotta play some more of that Valkyria preview. So. Oh, the uh, strategy game. Yeah, Sega strategy RPG. Yeah, I played that actually. Really? What, yeah. do you, what do you think? I think it's pretty good. Yeah, I went through this phase for like three years growing up where I played chess like every single day. Um, I didn't join a club or anything, but I was pretty into it. And playing this game feels a lot like the strategy that is behind. Yeah. playing chess. I saw it back at Tokyo Game Show, and what really surprised me is it seems like a traditional tactical turn-based game, but you actually get to aim your guns and shoot, which really surprised me. Yeah, I really like the way they present the battles in that you start with that overhead view right. of the map, so you have an idea of where the enemies are, at least the ones that are in your line of sight, and where all of your troops are, and it's very easy to distinguish what character class that they are, and you just, once you click on a person, that jumps into that third person view and that's where it kind of plays a little bit like chess where every class has a different type of attack they have a different range of movement of how far they can go and with this energy bar and then you can just run until it runs out and aim and shoot but that's what really in terms of it. like the aiming and shooting do you think skill really plays into it that was one of my biggest complaints about the game actually playing it in that you know it's very easy to set up shots and it does have this sort of simple rock paper scissors right. mechanic where units are stronger against others but at times where i'd be coming up with a tank or with a sniper or something you would miss shots that you didn't feel like you should have missed and there's no indicator to tell you like what your chances well, are or I mean, even though it looks like it's an action tactical game but there are still like dice being rolled you know yes, it, it is a real rpg underneath it all it's almost just like window dressing to make you feel like you're more you're interacting more than you are but i think it does work for the most part speaking of window dressing what do you think of the graphics because it kind of has a very unique well, style to I it i really when i first saw these these visuals i was blown away because no one had done that yet it has like the like brush stroke and like style to its cell shading so where it almost looks like pages of a book come to life the engine I had read was actually called Canvas, which I think is really appropriate. Yeah. And it kind of looks like a watercolor painting yeah, that's and in the motion. Color, the color choices are really unique. Beautiful. And, 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 you know, fits with like this Eastern European setting. Like, I love the character designs. 
They're very like traditional, like pleasant anime from the 70s or something. We're playing in Japanese, so like a lot of the nuances are lost on us, and I'm looking forward to see what the US version is like, but this idea is this alternate reality Europe in like the 30s, where World War II, their version of World War II, because like the West and the East of Europe are fighting, and you're in this country that's kind of like Holland with all these, you know, windmills, and you know, that's where the war is erupting, so everyone gets drafted, including the girls. As a old, old school Sega RPG fan, I was really happy to see two characters from Skies of Arcadia, Absolutely. which is an amazing game, just like show up in this game. I mean, and it's not a big surprise since the director of this game was also the director of Skies of Arcadia. I actually forgot that you could recruit them, but as <laughs> when I was going through the list and I saw, you know, Vise's avatar with his, you know, eye patch right. and everything. But I'm curious, like as far as I am, it's still kind of holding my hand and you know, it feels a little directed, but I have a feeling that later in the game it's gonna open up more and be more customizable. Is that is that true? Yeah, it really does. Like every single battle you go into, you have a tank that is your like core unit it's the main character welcome of the game that drives it and that is the the unit that you have to keep alive or the mission ends and then from there the the farthest I've got they let you pick eight other units and that's really anything you want you choose from assault rifles uh, guys with shotguns not shotguns but like long-range rifles snipers and um, these kind of like heavy demolitions guys with bazookas for taking out like heavy artillery and once you play in these larger maps, you have, I mean, I was literally fighting against armies where it was like three or four against one. Wow. And you're just slowly advancing. And I was coming up with really cool flanking techniques. They let you use the environments like tall grass to lie down and hide your character. You can hide behind cover after you fire some shots. And I've even noticed that um, it's really advantageous to put your units together. Whenever you're close to another character, they'll attack with you. And you guys kind of do this called a, a potential special attack. It almost reminds me of like Shining Force mixed with some more like modern tactical stuff. And yeah, I'm really digging it so far. It's, it's, there's nothing else like it out there. Even if you've played games like Final Fantasy Tactics or Disgaea, I think this, this has a different feel and it's a, a very cool world, cool graphics. Well, it gives you so much more control than the, the strategy genre, turn-based strategy genre usually gives you. I actually have to aim my gun, and they, they let you even aim body parts at certain body parts, and like doing a headshot will do a lot more damage and take out enemies a lot quicker, so you have to, you know, you can kind of just tap R1 to do an auto-aim and then use the D-pad to kind of fine-tune your reticle so you're aiming right where you want to. And I really, really enjoy doing that. Yeah, it's, I think it's going to be a while before we see it here on these shores, though. So They have a lot of localization to do. Yeah. I mean, everything in the game is Japanese. I mean, it's not a game I'd recommend importing. It's a Japanese take on, like, a European concept, so it's filtered through that. And I'm curious to see what the localization's like. If they go for, like, all, like, European accents or something, that'd be fun, so. And for me, too, yeah. like, just through playing the game, I've experienced a lot of those little nuances like I've talked about and I'm really looking forward to actually being able to read the menus like when you're going into the headquarters and upgrading weapons and leveling up your troops to actually find out all the other different things that I could be missing out on that I haven't done yet but so far it's been a really solid experience. Well and some of my other friends who played through more of the import complained that it's a little too easy so I wonder if they'll, if they'll maybe bump it up for America the difficulty. See I didn't have that problem at all because you're going into these battles almost completely blind. I don't know what I'm going against. I don't know what the terrain is like. I just get kind of a very basic overview and a lot of times it's a little bit of trial and error, I'll go in and realize I need more snipers in order to, you know, complete this or I should have brought like more demolitions guys because there's a lot of tanks that I'm going against. And so I often find myself playing each of these maps where the battles, some of them are like 45 minutes to an hour long to complete. I found it pretty challenging at the same time right. once you get further along. Cool. Well, all right. Yeah, if you could go get that stuff right. for me, Jay Fresh, I got a lot of... Some of my stuff is here, like Senator Jar Jar is right. here, yep. tongue, sure. tongue Jar Jar. Oh, I know how much you like that one. Here's like the three regular Jar Jars, but I'm missing Swimming Jar Jar, so... Swimming? Yeah. A swimming Jar Jar. Yeah, and all my stuff now. Okay, all right. All right. I'm, okay. So David Ellis ran off with our only copy of Boom Blocks. I know, we gotta play something. So we gotta play something. Gotta get ready for multiplayer, so... First one to take the whole thing down wins, alright? Don't hit the cow. No, you wanna hit... I think you wanna hit the Pokemon Panini Maker, actually. Alright, here we go. Oh, that wasn't so good. Here, you try. It doesn't give a bigger ball, though. Get an easier chance. Yeah. I got burned. Alright, my turn, come on. I don't want to hurt the baby cow, though. Go for the girls with guns. Yeah, you that. Oh! Oh, oh no! Uh, oh, we're pretty good. You got the cow. It always happens. The cows well, are really yeah. hard to save. That's not as much fun as the real Boomblox, I gotta say. No. But yeah, I love Boomblox multiplayer. I can't stop playing it. It is... You're all about the multiplayer. It's the best thing, best thing since Wii Sports. I agree with Shade. It is where this game transcends reality. Like, it's so much fun. And I have to say that I played it with people who don't like the Wii. 
And even these people were, you know, slowly but surely. At first, it takes a while to get this, get it a handle on the controls, and the Wii remote can sometimes be a little too sensitive, which is true throughout. But the in, game. I mean, versus almost any other Wii game, it's it's more consistent. I'd say it almost always does like yeah, in terms of like, like the throwing the and physics are so predictable and good. Like and it's, you, it's Havoc physics on on Wii, and you were used to seeing that in like shooters and such. I think my favorite were the, the ones where you're toppling the towers or dismantling because that's where you can set, sort of almost set traps for your competition because, you know, pulling out the one thing that you kind of hope and predict that it's gonna make their next move really suck and then set you up for a brilliant coup. You know, like that's something that um, is the real Jenga. The board game does really well, but I would say Boom Blocks beats the real Jenga by far it, because it offers so much more. That's why I think I like the single player more because it's more like methodic and you have time to you feel, like think these things through. In multiplayer, I just get pissed at the other person when they like don't have as steady a hand as I do and like tear the whole thing down when they're doing it. I like the puzzle sol solving aspect. I like how there's multiple ways to do it. You know, once you start learning what the other different blocks do, because there's all these different block types that explode in different ways and do different things, and there's not just one solution. And sometimes there's even multiple ways to get the best solution, like right. the one, the one throw solution, which I'm obsessed about always getting the one throw solution every time. <laughs> a rare game that, that inspires you to keep trying, even when you've gotten the bronze and then you get the silver. The fact that there is that gold level. And you always know it's possible. Yeah, and it's, it's an intellectual challenge as well as just a, a dex dexterity challenge. Well, and there's no punishment. There's, you know, like, it, you can keep playing games over and over again. Let the baby kittens die and you gotta do it again well, so that, don't, like... Okay, don't get me started on the yeah, horrible baby game characters, characters that the only thing I think that's gonna keep this game from being the mainstream adult success it deserves to be, I, I think if you pull this out at a dinner party, people have fun, are the characters. Like, it looks like a baby game. It looks like things that are in your baby's nursery, like a, a you know, mobile hanging from his crib. I don't think that that's gonna hold anybody back. The environments and the characters are fine and um, especially if you are the kind of person who builds stuff and you want to integrate them into your levels, then their behaviors become really useful. So I don't know. I think it only added to it. I think without it, it would be very like plain and and I don't know. boring. The real triumph though is how well it uses the accelerometer. How you really are like throwing these things, like, and you get into it and like. The simplest games are the best. The ones where you're just throwing the balls at things, trying to hit targets. Like, I don't like it when it really like you know, befuddles you with all these different objectives. And in the single player game, when, when it stops being throwing balls at things, I, I get a little bit removed from the game. <laughs>
they're actually intimidating a little bit at first because like the throwing thing took me a little bit of time to get used to get to where I could do it really reliably and then like I suddenly realized that I was making very accurate throws and getting really competitive and able to do exactly what I intended to do. Right, and it never feels canned. Like, you know, when you see something moving a little bit, and you're like, okay, I didn't do it, but sometimes it'll actually knock over and you're like, wow, I can't believe that happened. And, I yeah. love it when that <laughs> happens to my opponent. When you, and the thing is, it's like your turn will start. You, know, yeah. you start and setting it up and falling. then they drop the 50, negative 50 point cube and it's awesome. This is one where you wanna attach the Wii Remote with the strap because if anybody in your family hasn't quite mastered the whole like throwing motion but don't throw the thing like this is another thing that could could re-inspire the whole like broken TV thing from <laughs> because you're really throwing you're, yeah like when you realize that when you throw it really hard it actually helps so like you throw it really hard but you can also throw it underhand for grandma that works like you can, you can. I, I saw people successfully really? playing underhand which shocked it's me. also cool that you can use just the Wiimote and, like, that's how, and that's essentially how I one button I really because yeah. I use the nunchuck because I kind of prefer the camera control to the B button but it is essentially a one button game I just feel the game is a huge success it really blew away my expectations when I first saw this I'm like that's the Spielberg game really but you know they take a really smart approach of giving you the tools and like a playground and just letting you do all these different things with it. there's so much variety and just the core mechanic is fun and addictive and it's approachable like when you see people playing this game you want to play it. Got my new desk. New desk. New desk. Woohoo! I got a new desk. I'm gonna edit. It will be awesome. New desk. J Fresh. New hey, desk. All right. Awesome. Uh, Woohoo! Yes. New desk. Finally. Oh. It's glorious. It's beautiful. Man. Finally. 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 Can we start it back a little further again? Oh, monitors? Yeah. Well, the whites aren't blue enough, and that transition right there is about three frames too long. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Cool, thanks. Perfect, perfect, perfect. What's up, Fresh? Hey, what is this? I put that there, don't worry about it. All right, you're the boss. Vote for Fitch, huh? Early and often. Early and often. So, are you getting okay. a new desk set up now? I love it. It's amazing. Sweet. It is absolutely amazing. Sweet. I get two monitors. You know, it is looking a little sparse. You're gonna need to spruce it up, get some yeah, action I mean, figures or something like sure. that. I don't know, some posters. Sure. I mean, it's gonna take a while before your space looks anywhere near as awesome as my space. Oh, this is amazing. Chrisman gave me this uh, limited edition VHS copy created by Mark Borchard of Coven. And that's I know you awesome. think it's called Coven, but it's, it's Coven. Gotcha. Mark Borchard 2000, that's awesome. Wow. Coven. Coven for the win. I have no idea who that is. Don't worry about it. Okay, that's it's cool. awesome. How's that's your piece coming? Honestly, I'm a little behind. Why? Shane has like commandeered me to be his intern for the week. He keeps telling me I have to move stuff to his office. He's right there. He's like, hey, Ryan, have you seen Jay Fresh around anywhere? Yeah, no, I haven't seen him. Uh, he told me he was like helping you move stuff around or something like that. Yeah, that was earlier, and I even found my awesome state of emergency promotional crowbar. That looks pretty real. Check it out. Yeah, but I, I want to show it to him and I want some more help. So if you see him. Yeah, you know, I'll send him your way if I see him. All right, man, thanks. He has a crowbar? Yeah, it looks pretty real. <laughs> guy's insane. I know. Anyway, you should probably get back to work on your. Yeah, oh, he's, he's coming back. What? Just kidding, he's not coming back. You're an asshole. I know. games that I think are great are games that are instantly accessible, you like hop into them and it's fun right away, but it takes a long time to master them. MGO is not fun right away. I just gotta say the shooting isn't fun. Being a normal soldier and running around with my uh, with my automatic machine gun weapons, you know, it doesn't do it. it doesn't do it for me at all. The first two games that we played, 
um, I came over to Ryan and like, man, I, I hate this. I'm, I'm really frustrated. So I'm like, Ryan was like, really? You were doing fucking awesome. And I was like, what? Because I didn't even look at the score at the end and I got second place. And like, you know, I had like 150 points and the next person below me had 80 something points. And it was because all I was doing was spamming headshots. He thought he did bad, number one, and two, was not having a good time. That's a problem. That is, that's a problem. I think there's some things that make it really frustrating that are probably directly related to related to it being a beta, like the lag. I'd be shooting somebody and then it was like, oh, well, he's still alive. Well, I better keep shooting and all of a sudden, boom, he's dead with a headshot. Like, oh, I guess I did shoot him in the head. So it's, it's really hard to tell, you know, whether or not I was actually hitting them. Right, that's never acceptable. No. no. And like, my experience was so different because like when I played this game, it was after we'd all beaten MGS4, me and all these other journalists, and then in one room, we were all playing, you know, 10 of us over here, the other guys over there, and, and it was, you know, we, we slid right into it, the controls were seamless because we just played tons of Metal Gear Solid 4, right, right. and we, everyone was there, so we were all having a good time. You could yell at each <laughs> other. When you were playing with all those editors and you guys were in a room mm -hmm. and you could shout back well, to each other, they, so let's do this, let's do that, right. like where were the awesome gameplay well, moments for you there because I'm given not us, finding them. They've given us some of the more advanced skills, so then if you have those skills and you can share them with everyone on your team, it really helps everyone out. To grab another guy, have someone who is hacking, to hack into him and be able to see where all his things are, be able to use the, their I've never. I know that abilities. you can do that, but have a, I've never right. well, once seen anyone do it. As I said, it. it's kind of high level shit and like in a beta, people don't know what they're doing yet. And in a random pickup battle, you know, I just don't think that, that, that those scenarios, those high level gameplay scenarios, are going to show up as often. And if they do, it's going to be for the elites. This is a game for the elites, because anybody who has Metal Gear Solid 4 can dabble in it, see if they like it, but if you're really going to stick with it and be someone who dedicates themselves to this, it's going to offer you a lot. And those players, those dedicated players, are going to reap the rewards from this. Try playing with just using CQC or using your knife because I found it to be more fun than most online shooters. Because like I'm not that good at FPS, so I'll sometimes go on and just kill with knife. And in this game, Metal Gear kind of you know, rewards that. See, like I think <laughs> the CQC stuff does work, except the third-person camera in a team-based shooter actually makes it much harder than it would be normally. You're not going to be guaranteed to get the drop on anybody coming up from them behind because they can see you. Because they can see yeah. you probably if they're looking around like the way that they're supposed to be. There are a lot of problems with this game that have already been solved. Like they're been solved they're by shooters many, a long many time times before. years ago. I think the problem with online shooters in general, Westerners look at this as each one is supposed to replace everything before it. Like, what's the next Halo? What's the next Doom? And like, this isn't part of that, you know, at all. I think that's actually a valid point. But there are lessons that they could have learned from those FPSs that they didn't. For example, like, you, for example, spawn camping. You can fucking spawn camp like a motherfucker. Right. Well, in, in this fact, game. I would even argue this game like invites you to spawn camp and like do it in cruel ways, and, and that's you can do things with magazines and yeah, like it, there are spawn a lot of camping is not good game no, design. No, no, no. See, I'll design. agree. This game does open itself up to ex to exploitative play. There's one of the things I didn't like about it is the auto aim because in MGS4, one of the first things I did was turn auto aim off. Yeah. Like, from the start, I don't want auto aim. In this game, you kind of have to use it sometimes. At first, I thought that the gameplay was going to revolve around auto aim. If the enemy was close to you you'd use auto-aim. If they were at a distance, you'd use the manual aim. The game plays better when it's off all the time. If somebody's locked onto you, they're locked onto your chest. Your center is a bullet sponge. <laughs> like, one shot to the head kills. Even if I'm up on a group of guys, all I do is like, lay down the full automatic fire and wiggle back and forth in their head area and it's a headshot every single time. And then if you're further away and you're using like an assault rifle or whatever, you just like tap off a couple of shots and, or around their head area. So auto aim has a very 
very like nice spot right on the face button. You know, like it's why square, isn't right? Yeah, yeah why yeah. isn't that anything else? Like <laughs> anything else? Like why isn't that? That was one of my a, first questions as well. <laughs> I, it's on a face button. Shouldn't it be one of the most important things that you use? That's exactly what I'm getting at. Yeah. Mm. The more I played it, the more I saw the cool, interesting, new, unique stuff that is only in MGO. I've been playing for probably five, six hours, you know, as a soldier in sneaking mission games when finally, my god, finally, <laughs> five hours I'm in. Snake. I'm like, oh god, I'm Snake. You're trying to avoid detection, you're trying to avoid... Well, you, it's, it's that you're trying to avoid detection right. and then, you know, basically take someone out by using a non-lethal, like, takedown right. and then steal their dog tags. And it's very difficult to do. The Octo Camo makes you basically invisible. You show up when you're coming in and out of invisibility as these kind of dithered dots on the screen, and those are visible. So if you're really smart and you've been playing a lot and you're looking around a corner and you see like, oh, some little bit of shimmers on the wall, you can take out Snake. But I mean, ordinarily, he's pretty yeah, hard to I only to took about once in like the 10 games I played. Yeah. <laughs> I was playing a soldier for so long that I was just getting tired of it. Matt had been frustrated and just didn't want to play it anymore, and I was like, man, all right, I'll play a little longer. And then like three rounds later, I was the Otacon bot. And I didn't even know you could be that. I did. I thought I figured it was a, something that Snake controlled himself or something like that. And so when I got the chance to be this thing, I was like, okay, this is really cool. I just started rolling around the map, like shocking everyone, just rolling around. And by the time I knew it, I was like the highest scoring player on the team. And I was just like, wow, this is so fun and so awesome. And then like three seconds later, I got kicked from the server. Oh. And I was like, what? 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 Oh. I couldn't possibly have been doing anything else. The only thing you can do as the Otacon bot is roll around, right. turn stealth, and shock people. And I guess I was just shocking people too well because they didn't want me on the server anymore. And that was the best I've ever done in the game was like that one time I got kicked. I've played this game for between seven and ten hours now. I've got to play a snake one time. That's kind of really bad. One yeah. time. One time. I've got to play as the Otacon bot twice. And those three matches have been awesome, and I really did enjoy the game. I think what they're trying to do is I think they're trying to map a lot of conventional FPS gameplay onto an unconventional interface and it means that the traditional gameplay modes that they're trying to push don't function as well as they do in other games. Standard deathmatch in Metal Gear is only fun for a few minutes. It really like, you know, it's it's not what the game is meant to be. Yeah, right. You know, other bosses, other story characters will be available down the road with all of their abilities. When that shit's available and you can make these crazy like boss battles where it's like you versus these bosses in this certain right, arena yeah, yeah. and you can really fuck with it, it's gonna be amazing. The modes that play to Metal Gear's strengths are the best modes, and I hope that moving forward that's what they do. And another thing is, you know, there's a limited arsenal in this demo and full MGS4 has over 75 fully customizable weapons. They get really crazy, really creative, really insane. When all that's in the game, I think it'll make it more fun too. Interesting. I had moments of sheer bliss. Getting killed by, like, Snake, in a, in a very interesting way. Like if I turn around a corner and all of a sudden I'm like, oh wait, oh fuck, oh shit. And then I see Snake and I go to stab him a couple times and then he runs away and I go chase after him, trying to find him, know exactly where he is and I can't see him because of the camo. And then all of a sudden from behind, he gets me, yeah. takes me down. I'm like, you know what? That is that is really cool. It's like funny, that is really cool. All of my good memories too are all of Sneaking Mission. And so I, th I think you're right. Like, Konami, you can get your productions, play to your strengths, don't try to outdo Call of Duty because you can't. You cannot. Mm -hmm. You know, like, what's unique about Metal Gear, like, that's what they need to celebrate. Totally. The fact that it has fucking voice chat is a triumph for Japanese game development, <laughs> to, to be honest. At PGS, it did not I have know. voice chat. Well, yeah. Like, 
they're, they're, every little thing we get, there's like they're kicking and punching and fighting, trying to get it to us. So I, ho I hope. I, I mean, I really hope they play to the strengths of the series. I mean, that'll make it the best possible game. Because yeah, like, I think I want to like yeah, it. I, I, I want to I, like I it hope desperately. That if a year from now, MGO is like a thriving, awesome, unique community that's worth getting into and worth the money you're going to have to spend to buy all that shit, I'll be really happy. But I don't necessarily expect that to happen. Mm -hmm. But even if it doesn't, MGS4, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't need it. The day MGS4 comes out, I, I tell everyone, don't even try playing MGO. Play Metal Gear Solid 4. Yeah. Play that first. Yeah. And then, if you need more, go play MGO. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> I gotta see this. Oh, that's awful. Awful. God. Oh, holy facial hair. Hey. Mike, how you doing? God, you scared me. Dude, take a look at that. Seriously, take a peek. It's fucked up. Yeah, it is. That's it's fucked up. That's fucked up. Wow, nice guys, good job. It's really starting to look like home. This guy knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, awesome, right? Sure. All right, man, yeah, cut it with the sentimentality. It's one up north, we're re-erected, I'm excited. It's great. Well, it does look pretty good. It looks great. Admittedly, but we got a lot of work to do. Just get back to work, buddy. Fine, fine. What is with the mustaches, guys? Weirdos.